we're getting right back into the what ifs. Tuesday, November 9th, just baseball show. Jack McMullen, Peter Apple. What if Carlos Correa signed for $330 million? What if Max Scherzer is an Anaheim Angel or an LA Angel, LA Angel of Anaheim? This is my favorite thing to do, especially with you, because we just love giving away money that's not ours. Hundreds of millions of dollars billions of dollars in contract value when we look at all of these free agents so we're ranking the top 15 free agents and you'll see them as in order as we think that they're valuable in that order along with a prediction of where they're going a prediction for how much and just some casual banter because we truthfully have no idea where any of these people are going this kind of marks the move into the off-season mode for us. And the off-season doesn't slow down. We're actually going to, by sheer podcast per week, episodes per week, we're going up during the off-season because we're dorks and we love doing this stuff. More fun. <laughs> it's more fun because you can speculate. Now, here's what is going to be really fun about this, right? Um, you mentioned we're throwing around billions of dollars of money that we don't have. Apparently it's there. Apparently it it's there. available. And like Javi Baez might get $200 million. He no shouldn't, shot. but he might. Yeah. This is <laughs> against almost us. like. Yeah. No, I was going to say just against our will, because this is also when we're telling you the contract lengths, it's our best estimation of what they should get but it's also with the caveat of maybe it might be a little bit lower than you might see other people post it as because we're kind of like does this player really deserve what's been being told to us from other media outlets yeah this is our two-part unveiling for the most part it is our top 15 free agents for the 2022 season we've got it organized one through 15 so you will hear all the way from the two blue chip shortstops all the way to some aging pitchers at the bottom of this list. We'll also mention some guys that just missed the cut at the very end. So that's part one of the honorable mentions. Yeah, tons of honorable mentions. That's part one of the unveiling. Part two of kind of our unveiling here with Just Baseball is where do we think they're going for how much? And we're not, you know, saying if I was in Farhan Zaidi's shoes, how much am I giving this right-handed starter to come to San Francisco? We are saying, here is what they are going to get. It's pretty much a market prediction. And that's what's fun for us. But like I said, it's a market prediction. But you'll hear some stuff about Javier Baez that we're hearing 175. And we're just simply, I can't fathom giving him that much amount of money. So maybe we might hear an early market value for 175. But we're going to tell you what we think actually is the market value. Yeah, like us as baseball people look at 175 for him and like spit up our coffee. Oh, 35% strikeout rate, 175. That's just a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Before we get into the free agent frenzy, you slept this weekend for the first time in a really long time, and it was probably a cathartic experience. See, the problem with me is that even when I've been trying to sleep, I mean, earlier this week, you know, going to bed early, but then I'm just waking up even earlier. Finally, Sunday night, I mean, Saturday too, slept a lot of Saturday, went to bed at 8.45, woke up, Jack, at three in the morning this morning. No way. Three in the, well, Monday morning, three in the morning, go back to sleep, wake up at seven, feel great. So I did get those hours of sleep, but my body is still on the, you aren't allowed to get more than six or seven. Yeah, man, you got to bump that to eight. Got to bump it to eight. We'll get to eight soon, though. December. Yeah. yeah. Catch me in January at nine. Then we move back into February, back down to eight, March 7. Then April, we're at six for the rest. Damn, we're just climbing. It's like a bell curve, right? You just got to build up. It's like training for something, but we're just training. It's like I'm trying to sleep. I can't. And I don't, it's, but that's my life now. And if my life is a little bit less sleep and more talking sports, I'll sleep when I'm dead. I'm all I'm all for it. Good for you, man. Go. Cool. Uh, you dealt hey, with a Karen. Yeah, I got to tell you about this this Karen incident that I had at Pasta da Pulcinella in downtown Atlanta last night. Can you night. describe what a Karen is for anyone who might not know? I think people know what a Karen is. A Karen is somebody that you want to stand up and say, "Why are you being like this?" <laughs> <laughs> You just totally spit out your water. 
Oh my God. Do you get it on the just baseball merch? By the way, I, promo got, for- I know I almost got yeah. it on, on the new use code fade Jack 50% <laughs> off just baseball merch. I just spilt dude. Cause that was just like, like, what are you doing? That was the perfect explanation for a Karen. No, like no gender use, no what they were doing. Just a simple look of like, why are you the way that you are? Yeah. It doesn't matter, man or woman. Like a man can be a Karen too. It's just Absolutely. like, why do you suck? Um, a definition of a Karen might be, you know, uh, I can't, I'm sure. Tr- give me the perfect definition of a Karen. The perfect definition of a Karen is this story. Yes. Pasta de Pulcinella, downtown Atlanta. I had an exceptional risotto. Amazing. Uh, the runner at the table next to us was clearing appetizers. It was two probably 50 to 55-year-old women um, dressed nicely, nice jewelry, talking about their upcoming vacations. Good Typical start. conversations, you know, just people enjoying their lives. Good start, but but the vacation seemed a little bit lavish. So I said, oh, okay, they've got a, they've got some coin working around here. So the runner comes and just to strike up a, a teensy conversation as she starts to clear the appetizer, she said, you know, how did you enjoy your food? And one of them perks up and says, well, this one was solid, but this one was terrible. And the runner said, oh my, I, I'm so sorry to hear that. She said, yeah, just awful, like truly awful. And the runner gave off a nervous laugh. She was like, oh, well, I, I'll take it back. I'm, I'm so sorry again. Uh, if you want to speak to anybody, let me know. And this Karen said, oh, you're laughing because it was awful? Oh my God, I've never experienced that before. Oh, I'm going to need to talk to somebody about you. My thing is, I can't even comprehend, like, I can't relate with those feelings. I cannot relate with a person, even speaking to someone who came with your food. It's hard for me to explain the thoughts that I'm thinking right now, because those thoughts don't even come into my mind rather than those thoughts are there. And I'm just like, oh, I shouldn't say that. Like those don't even appear in my own brain and most people, they don't either. Right. And, and even more people like, so you've got, I think the majority of people don't even think like that. Don't even want to say something like that. A lot of the people that do want to say something like that, suppress it because they know that is the social norm to suppress it and just talk shit behind somebody's back. And then there's the Karens. And then there's the Karens who said that to this poor food runner and you I want to cook your meal. I mean, like she was literally just picking up your plate and I wanted to, yeah, I was like close to the point. I, I told my girlfriend and her sister, I was just like, I want to turn around and say something really mean to her. And I held myself back because again, that's what normal people do. They suppress their anger if they have anger, but that got such a, um, just a repulsive reaction from me. How is somebody that mean to somebody? Why are you personally attacking somebody that had zero to do with constructing your appetizer? I, t- I just don't have an answer for you. I don't have an answer for you. God. You're at a restaurant, shut the hell up and eat your food. And if you don't like it, leave. It was a really good restaurant. Don't put that on the servers, especially anyone who's worked in the service industry. As if that runner made your food and then deserves your lip shut the hell up and leave just shut up again pasta da pulcinella uh downtown atlanta georgia very very good food and if this somehow gets back to the runner because i'm sure it will oh, of I'm course sure she will be listening to a baseball podcast uh I feel bad for you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You are doing great at your job. The food was exquisite and she was just having a bad day and took it out on you. So I want to do the classic Fran Fraschillo when you turn on the NBA draft, you hear the international basketball like comps that dive into Kristaps Porzingis and Luka Doncic to kickstart our free agency conversation. Love it. Because Seiya Suzuki is a 27 year old in Nippon professional baseball in Japan. That's going to get posted and he's going to be eligible to sign a free agent deal. 
let me just run you through Seiya Suzuki. He's 5'11", 185. So not a physically imposing guy. He's no Shohei Otani. He's not even you, no. Darvish. 27 years old. He's a utility guy. He can play both outfield and infield. I'm just going to read you Jim Bowden's write-up on The Athletic. The Hiroshima Toyo Carp of Japan's Nippon Professional Baseball are expected to announce this week that they are posting Suzuki, clearing the way for the star outfielder to potentially join a Major League Baseball team. Suzuki, the MVP of the 2019 WBSC Premier 12 tournament, slugged 38 home runs and logged a 1079 OPS in 131 games this season for the Carp. He's a patient hitter with power and speed. Suzuki won't be subject to international signing bonus limits because of his age and years of pro experience. Jim Bowden with The Athletic has a contract prediction of five years, $101 million for Suzuki to come over. Here's the deal. And we've seen it with Otani. We've seen it with Darvish. We've seen it with Ichiro. We've seen it with tons of Japanese players that come to Major League Baseball. That is the second best baseball league in the world. Nippon professional baseball in Japan. It's better than the KBO. It's better than anything else going on. If you are the best player in Japan, you're going to come over and be an immediate contributor stateside. Suzuki automatically became this top 20 free agent. We can't say whether he's 10 to 15 because the reality is we've watched clips of him hitting home runs, but that's all you got to see from Luka Doncic or Kristaps Porzingis, right? You got to see the putback jams from Porzingis, but it looked like it was filmed on the moon. There is not enough for us to make a calculated opinion on this guy. All I want to say is I'm drinking the Kool-Aid for Seiya Suzuki. I think he's going to be a star when he comes over. See, I'm in between because when we were talking about Seiya Suzuki and we were doing all these free agency rankings, I just I had to go look at video because I can't I can't trust the words on paper. I got to go actually watch the guy and see if I like his swing. Right. Um, obviously, there's not that much video, but there's enough for me to at least look at the guy. And I like him. You know, I like his swing. You and I were both saying it's it's powerful. Uh, it's smooth. I mean, he looks like a professional hitter. My my thing is, I was very big on another guy, Ha Seong Kim, coming over from the KBO, a guy who hit. In 2020, in the KBO, he hit 306. He had 30 bombs. He drove in 109. He stole 23 bases. You know, he had 24 doubles. If you had told me before that ha Kim was going to get a five-year deal, I would have said, okay, maybe that is the correct thing to give him. But now I'm seeing Seiya Suzuki thinking, oh, we just saw this, but maybe is not unfair to compare, like you said, the Japanese league is better than the KBO. I'm nervous to give a guy like that five years. So here's my thing. I, I'm not as nervous because, again, the Japan pipeline, the Nippon Professional Baseball League is just so far and away the second best Is league. it so far and away better than the KBO? Like so I, far and away? I think so. Well, there you go. I, I, so. I just never heard that they were like miles different. Yeah. Well, Japan just has a higher quality of baseball than Korea and Korea's is improving, but you know, keep in mind before Hassan Kim came over, who were the guys that kind of paved the way? Shin Su Chu, Hyunjin Ryu was another guy that kind of paved the way, but there is more of a track record with Japan for you to come over and be MLB all-star ready. Of course, Ichiro, but Ichiro was generational. But now you've got guys like Yu Darvish coming over and Shohei Otani coming over. If I see a Japanese player that is branded as a superstar, I'm going to believe it because of the track record over the last couple of years. So I'm really excited to see what he does. Now, if I was a GM, I've got to dive in. Like I've got to spend like two weeks only looking at Suzuki because what I can find on him in two weeks is what I can find on my smartphone in an hour on any of these other free agents that have yeah. been in major league baseball for five years. That's so. the problem. We just don't really know enough, but what we could be looking at as a potential superstar or what we could be looking at as a potential role player. It's the problem. Right. So what's he going to turn out to be? You have no idea. And in any sport, 
that is the con of international scouting. Yeah. There always seems to be this super high ceiling, super low floor. And yeah. with him being 27 years old, it sounds like he is a high floor, higher ceiling guy, which is why I think we're seeing this 20 million annual value being thrown around right now. So that's our and thing on Seiya Suzuki. That's our thing on Seiya Suzuki. And we also have, we, we'd like to break into some of our honorable mentions, some of the guys who are stateside. So these are the honorable mentions to our top 15 free agents list. First, Relief pitcher Rossiel Iglesias with the Anaheim Angels. Kenley Jansen, another reliever with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Justin Verlander leaving the Houston Astros, potentially. Anthony Rizzo, he was a Yankee. Where will he go? Brandon Belt was a Giant. Michael Conforto was a Met. Seiya Suzuki, of course. And Noah Syndergaard, who is also possibly leaving the Mets. A lot of qualifying offers. A lot of guys going into their age 30 plus seasons. Yeah. Of the guys you mentioned, Brandon Belt, Michael Conforto, Rysel Iglesias. Uh, you didn't mention Eduardo Rodriguez, but Noah Syndergaard and Verlander all got the qualifying offer extended to them. One year, $18.4 million. Um, some notable guys that did not get the qualifying offer. Clayton Kershaw, who we'll dive into. We'll dive into that situation a little bit later on in the podcast. Also, John Gray did not get the qualifying offer. Anthony DiSclafani did not get it. And Carlos Rodon did not get it. So Carlos Rodon, non-tendered, comes back, signs a one-year, $3 million deal, shoves, deals with injury, and then doesn't get extended the qualifying offer. Yeah, this what do you think about that, especially White Sox? Like, would you have totally done it? Where, where are you on that? Um, I... I'm not sure because I think Rodon would have accepted, to be honest. Mm -hmm. The qualifying offer, I, let me just read through the list of people that got the qualifying offer. Keep in mind, almost nobody that gets extended the qualifying offer takes the qualifying offer. It's yeah. just a formality. Yeah. Nobody wants to sign one year 18.4 when they can go on the open market if their name is Nick Castellanos, Carlos Correa, Freddie Freeman, Conforto, like I mentioned, Belt, like I mentioned, Iglesias, Robbie Ray, Corey Seager, Marcus Semien, Trevor Story, Chris Taylor. Like those guys are going to make more than one year 18.4. So the idea of a qualifying offer is somehow, some way, if they decide to accept this, great, you get them for another year. But it's just a formality. Nobody's going to accept this. I think if there's one guy that might accept this deal, could it be Brandon Belt? But it feels like he's going to make a little bit more money. Could it be Rysel Iglesias? But could he get three years or four years? I don't know. It's going to be a really interesting game to see played. Rysel Iglesias is such an underrated reliever. Yeah. I mean, I remember him with the Reds. He was great. Then he moved on to Anaheim. And even guys who move over to Anaheim, their careers seem to somehow end there. <laughs> Starting pitching relievers. But Iglesias was great again. He's another really under... I kind of wanted to move him into the top 15, personally, because I think he's the best reliever on the market. I personally would rather have him over Kenley Jansen. For sure. So I wanted to move him in, but I also hate paying relievers. So while I'm saying he's my favorite reliever, do I want to give him a three-year deal? Probably not. That's why maybe he doesn't make this top 15 free agents list. Even though you might see someone on our list get less, we think they're a little bit more valuable because I don't want to sign a reliever. Yeah. Who have the Yankees signed in the bullpen to big money? Chapman, Zach Britton. Who else am I missing? Did they sign out out of Vino to big money or was it just not One really year, big money. It's just that we're signing relievers, giving them 11 to 15 million over two year contracts, making it 30 million. And then there's like five of them in the bullpen. And then you're just sitting there like, well, there's hundreds of million dollars just in the bullpen and they're not all worth it. Yeah. I mean, for every Liam Hendricks that you see who kind of lives up to the money or Araldis Chapman, his first two years of that contract, uh, kind of living up to the money, mm -hmm. you have an Andrew Miller where it's, you know, $14 million committed to somebody that is kind of a liability at points and can't really deal with a righty anymore. So relievers are very hit or miss. And you've talked how about, about Brad how Hand, another yeah, example. Exactly. I mean, guys like that, I mean, uh, this, is, this is not probably the best example, 
but the Blue Jays did go get Kirby Yates from the Padres who immediately got injured. So there's also just that possibility of guys getting injured, getting put on the shelf. Yeah. I mean, that's with everybody, but especially relievers. I mean, we see relievers go down all the time. That's why I'm just, although I may really like Iglesias, I assume that his market is just going to be too high for if I was a GM, I'd want to sign him for, like, I just don't want to sign any single reliever for 10 plus million ever. I'll just build them myself. Yeah, like, I agree with you. I think that especially in this day and age in 2021, the amount of guys that are in AAA, AA, even high A that are sitting 97 with their fastball and have a good enough slider, like, they can get you through innings. They can get you through innings. We're seeing guys come up like that. I mean, exhibit A with the Yankees, Jonathan Luizaga became their best reliever this year. And what is he? He's a failed starter. That yep. wasn't that good. We didn't really think much of him. You put him in the bullpen. Hey, throw a hundred and just throw a slider and just, you're good. And he yep. was good. And we're just seeing that over and over. Garrett Whitlock with the Red Sox, failed Yankees farmhand starter, put him back in the bullpen. We even know, even the Zach Britons, the Andrew Millers, all these guys were just failed starters that became really good relievers. Yeah. So you get all your guys that weren't that good at starting pitching, but you know, could throw hard, throw them in the bullpen. They'll be fine. I, I had the opportunity to watch Kevin Copps for a month in Fort Wayne after he was drafted by the Padres. He's something different, um, though. Yeah, like, here's the thing, though. You've got a lot of guys that throw 99 with a mean slider, too. So they're throwing 99 and a 91-mile-an-hour, you know, breaking ball. With Cops, um, and I, I talked to him about this. Like, I said, what were your realistic expectations going into the 2021 college baseball season? And he said, I mean... I was gunning for stopper of the year. I didn't think the golden spikes was anywhere close to what I could do. Uh, and, and his year just took off because he found that one pitch that nobody could touch and seeing a lot of really talented high a hitters. And then watching him make a couple of appearances at double a, you know, seeing talented double a hitters, nobody could touch this 85 mile an hour cutter that was coming from over the top. So he had one pitch and he's going to get through big league innings probably next year with one pitch, and it's going to be 85 miles an hour. That's what a reliever can do. I don't know if I value that the same way you value a three-year deer for a starting pitcher, right? Why am I going to pay a reliever $50 million when you've got this kid at Arkansas who's, a, who's like a fifth-year senior dropping 85-mile-an-hour cutters? Granted, he's an alien, but it's just – crazy to me that th there's so much big money going to a guy to eat up the eighth inning and a couple a couple more guys a couple starting pitchers a couple starting pitchers I mean Justin Verlander what do you give a guy who's turning 39 but we just saw on Twitter that in his last bullpen session he's 95 to 96 again and that the Yankees and the Mariners were there but I'm also just scared of what I'd give Noah Syndergaard, a guy coming off an arm injury like that. I mean, he's just dealt with injuries all over his body for his entire career. And he's another guy who, if he's throwing 100 miles an hour, that value is there. But if his arm is not, he's a guy who relies on power stuff. And if the power is not there anymore, what kind of pitcher is Noah Syndergaard? Right. I don't know. It, these are the mysteries and that's why they're not in the top 15. Yeah. I think a deal for Verlander looks like one year, 25 mil, something weird, just incentive laden. I'm also curious. This is a guy who just missed. Um, I mean, Anthony Rizzo is a free agent and I, I think it's funny because champion. everybody. Yeah. I mean, what do you think about Anthony Rizzo? I, I don't, I don't really know where to place him yeah i i don't necessarily know what a contract is going to look like i could see like three years 55 but i just find it funny like nobody really thinks anyone's a contender for rizzo other than the red Sox and the yankees <laughs> it's He's strange just... right i feel like they're just going to drive up the price for both of them or is the rizzo boat using that as fuel to get the price up for somebody else i don't know because that's the thing. That's the in? thing with MLB trade rumors, especially during the offseason. You might see teams that are connected with these players, but it's just the agent saying that they're connected to drive up their price. Yeah. That's why the Yankees are in seemingly every single free agent's bucket. So when we go through all of our best fits for these guys, you might see Yankees in a lot of them because we've heard a lot of them could be possibilities to the Yankees. It's not just my bias. 
Yeah. Do we want to go 15 to one or do we want to go one to 15? I think 15 to one. Let's do it. And let's start with our 15th best free agent in this class, 33-year-old Clayton Kershaw. Kershaw is going to turn 34 before the 2022 season starts. Here's the thing. He's an eight-time All-Star. He's a three-time Cy Young Award winner. He's an MVP. He's an owner of a pitching triple crown, which is leading baseball in wins, ERA, and strikeouts. He's got five ERA titles to his name. He's got a gold glove. He's a World Series champ. He's got a career ERA at 249. A career 249 ERA. But he had a 35 ERA, and nobody knows how healthy he is. We view the contenders for him as the Dodgers, obviously, the Rangers, because he's from the Dallas area. He lives in Dallas in the offseason. And then you wrote down the Yankees just because you're an asshole. The Yankees need starting pitching. <laughs> it's not Clayton Kershaw. But wouldn't it make sense that the Yankees could see, you know, what Clayton Kershaw, let's bring him to the Big Apple. No. Is the, are the Yankees probably the best fit? Eh, probably not, but no. I wanted to add him regardless. I think what a contract is going to look like for Clayton Kershaw is a one year, maybe in 15 to 18 million, just laded with incentives based on innings. That's what I think we're going to see with Clayton Kershaw. I don't know if he gets a two, three year deal, but then we could look back and say, oh, wait, he did get two years, 60 million. We just simply kind of don't know what the Dodgers want to do with him because, like you said, no qualifying offer. What's going to happen with Clayton Kershaw, the greatest pitcher, regular season pitcher, probably of our generation? Yeah, there was there was this scare just reading a bunch of different reports about why Kershaw didn't get the qualifying offer because I found it fascinating. But the reality is, if Clayton Kershaw got the qualifying offer, he probably would have accepted because there are so many question marks around his health that one year 18.4 mil that sounds kind of nice right now that sounds really nice for me I don't know if it sounds nice for our generation's Nolan Ryan or Randy Johnson or Sandy Koufax but like that is what Kershaw is he is the greatest pitcher of this generation and you know Jim Bowden with the athletic I, I just mentioned him you know I thought it was funny he said about Kershaw, the possible destinations for him were the Dodgers, the Dodgers, and the Dodgers. And I don't see Clayton Kershaw in a uniform other than the LA Dodgers. I'm willing to stamp my name on that. I think Clayton Kershaw is going to be an LA Dodger in 2022. Jim Bowden thinks that it's going to be one year round 15 that, you know, might get bumped up to 25 or 30 or 35, depending on the innings that he throws. And I kind of agree with that. I think you too. one right, like one year, show us what you can do at 34 and then we'll work on a year by year basis. Who kept doing that? Did LeBron keep signing one year deals before he signed that Laker deal? I think it was like two years with opt outs. So it kind of always was a one year deal. I think it yeah. was, it was on two year with the Cavs, two year with the Lakers. And then it was always an opt out. So he was a free agent every single year. You're probably yeah. listening to this and thinking to yourself, Clayton Kershaw is only 33. Why wouldn't he get a three, four-year deal? You got a Max Scherzer at 37 who's probably going to get a three-year deal. Why wouldn't Kershaw? I got to tell you, I don't really know. I mean, I know it's because of the injuries, and I know it's because he's taken a slight step back, but it's still Clayton Kershaw. Like, if I'm a GM, why wouldn't I give the guy two years, 40 million if I'm a contender and I need a starting pitcher, and it's just now I have Clayton Kershaw in my rotation. That's, the reality, that's where I just kind of, as a maybe as me looking into it, I don't really get it. Yeah. And, and you know what drives up the price for him is his ability to sell tickets and draw viewers. Yep. So you have to think about that. As a GM, as an owner who's telling the GM what to do sometimes, if they're a hands-on owner, that's what you have to think about. If you're the Texas Rangers, you know you're going to suck next year. But why not bring back the hometown kid and every fifth day at Globe Life Field, you get as close to a sellout as you're going to get during the regular season, and you're going to have 500,000 more viewers on your telecast. You know, you got to think about that stuff. How much do you value that yeah. pub at? Exactly. I just really hope he stays healthy and 
dom you know dominates in 2022 and then gets an actual fat deal that he deserves yeah i agree let's move on to 14 our guy Javi Baez is our 14th best available free agent right now. The 28-year-old this year hit 265 with 31 bombs and 87 RBIs. I got the good stats out of the way. Fair? Fair. He was third in Major League Baseball with a 34% strikeout rate. He was bottom 10 in baseball with just a 5% walk rate. And here is what I want to point to. He had the third highest swing rate on pitches outside the zone. 47% of the pitches outside the strike zone he swung at. For reference, one of the two guys that had more strikeouts than him was Joey Gallo. Joey Gallo's outside swing rate, O swing, was less than half. Javi Baez swung at 47% of pitches thrown to him outside the strike zone. Joey Gallo swung at 22% of the pitches thrown to him that were not a strike. There is a serious problem with plate discipline here, but the Mets, Cubs, Yankees, Tigers, Rangers, and Astros all seem to be interested in Javi Baez. I got him going to the Mets for five years, $100 million, because I think that they're the only team that will give him that type of contract. Javi Baez, like you said, with the plate discipline, it's not the same where, you know, you take the strikeouts if you can get the walks. No, no, no. Javi Baez just strikes out. And if he's not striking out, he's hitting for power. We saw with the home runs. He can provide some juice in that lineup. And, yeah, you're going to tell me he's an elite defender, and I'm going to tell you I don't think he is. If you put him at second base, is he a better defender? Absolutely. And that's where he would be with the Mets. And that's where I see the value. I don't like him as a shortstop moving forward. I think he's too flashy with the glove. I think he makes too many mistakes for the nice tag that you might see on a highlight reel. I personally wouldn't give Javi Baez anything. But what I think he'll get is $100 million with the New York Mets. I'd give Javi Baez two years. He's going to get five here's what just clicked in my mind that's so screwed up and I feel kind of bad, but not really that bad for Steve Cohen and Mets ownership and, and who's signing these checks. Javi Baez, there are a lot of outlets that I trust that have Javi Baez valued around $150 million. If Baez gets a hundred and if, if Baez gets $160 million from the Mets for five or six years, Here's how I look at it. You just invested half a billion dollars in Francisco Lindor because you are so attracted to Baez because he's Lindor's like best friend. Yeah. Lindor was pounding the pavement for Baez to come to Queens. So if you sign Baez to big money, granted, he did have an OPS over 900 with the Mets. We know that we've documented that, but if, you sign Baez for that big of money, which is too much money in our opinion, you just invested $500 million in making Francisco Lindor happy. And Francisco Lindor, I don't think was worth 341. And I sure as hell don't think he's worth 500 million. That's a, that's also, a screwed up way of thinking about it. It is a screwed up way of thinking about it. And I think it's also, yeah, was he ever worth 340? it's easy to say that he's not after a season that we just saw, but he was one of the best shortstops that we've seen in a very long time. He was young, but I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Even at the time that seemed a little bit excessive. Yeah. And I'm also thinking about like, just the worst thing that could possibly happen to the New York Mets. Let's say they sign Javi Baez again. Both of them have down years next year. You're, you're fucked. You're, well, yeah, I'm not, they... you're screwed. You're fucked for a long time. Years of shit. Years and I'm shit. not saying that they deserve it, but I'm saying if they give Javi Baez a hundred plus million dollars, it's going to happen. I don't know. And we'll see. Here's but the thing. Ah. Dude, here's the thing. They sucked for two weeks and they alienated the fan base. What if they suck for half a season? Like what, what if the they fan suck base for the next half decade? God, I'm not God. saying they will. I'm also not predicting that Lindor is going to have a bad season or Baez goes straight there. I'm just saying, what could happen is you could spend $500 million in totality and have some awesome tag highlights. 
but but granted the greatest tags i've ever seen and that's i'm not even joking there those two up the middle are the the swiftest of taggers we've seen in our lifetimes that's going to be the most aesthetically pleasing middle infield in baseball maybe in baseball history yeah like that tandem defensively is really good javi makes a lot of errors lindor is world class world defensively class. At his best, if Javi cuts down on the airs, Javi is world-class. So you have two can't-miss television middle infield pairings here, regardless of who's at short, who's at second on any given night. The problem is, is Javi Baez going to strike out all the time? Is Lindor going to hit 240 again? Because like those two things can't happen. But it is a business, and Javi Baez sells jerseys, and he sells tickets too. So... Let's move on to a pitcher, though, because we could talk about Javi Baez all day. Totally. Kevin Gosman is 30 years old. He led the National League with 33 starts this year. He made his first All-Star game, had an ERA under three, 227 strikeouts in just under 200 innings of work. This was his best year. This was his breakout year. And now he hits the open market. 2021 was an anomaly for Kevin Gosman to this point. We know that he had a ton of natural ability and we heard that and we just heard that Baltimore was wasting a lot of it. But the only time that Gosman's ERA was even remotely close to what he did this year was in the final stretch of the 2018 season with the Braves across 10 starts. He was a bullpen option at the end of 2019 with the Reds. He's turning 31 before this season gets going. The Giants the Jays, the Cardinals, the Angels, and the Red Sox, we think are the final five for Gosman. And I think the Blue Jays are actually going to sign Kevin Gosman to a five-year, $100 million deal. My thinking there is Ryu's getting a little bit older. Steven Matz is most likely gone, if I'm not mistaken. Jose Barrios is still there. We don't know if they'll re-sign Robbie Ray. He's going to have a ton of suitors. Alec Manoa looks like the real deal, but will Nate Pearson make, will he go to the rotation? Will he go to the bullpen? We aren't really sure there. I think they need one more legit starter. And doesn't Kevin Gosman, after a year he had with the Giants, and we aren't really sure, don't the Blue Jays kind of feel like that team to make that leap and say, Kevin Gosman, we want to make you our guy? Somebody's going to take the leap. It could be the Jays. It could be somebody else. I, I think there's only going to be one leaper. I don't think that the market's going to be that big for Gosman just because he hasn't done it for two years. He's yeah. done it for one year. And you saw how badly he tailed off at the end of the year. I mean, not bad. He, he just wasn't first elite. Half. Right. Yeah. He but was... also, Kevin Gosman is a guy that when he was on Baltimore, even when he was on Atlanta, there was always that he could become good if he was unlocked. Yes. So, it's, so now, yes. right. No, no, well, you go ahead. The question is, is he fully unlocked or was that just a one-year thing? See, I think that there's a possibility that he could be unlocked because that splitter is real. And the fastball, if he maintains that velocity, it's real. He's a good pitcher when on. I think maybe sometimes in the back half of the season, did he get a little bit tired? Was he... I mean, you said it yourself. He made the most starts in 2021 from a starter. Could that be a reason? I don't know. I still believe in Gosman. I'd be worried to give him that much money, but I think that's what the market will give him. And I, it's hard to predict. I just, in my mind, I'm thinking, who's a team that I've seen in the past give these types of deals? Toronto. Yeah, I could see the Giants doing something similar like when they first acquired Jeff Samarja. You remember that? Like he got big yeah. money annually. I could see that too. You like the Giants there? Or do you like the Blue Jays? So what are your thoughts on the Blue Jays there? I like the Jays. I think the Jays need a starter. I don't know how much interest Marcus Stroman, and we'll get to him. I don't know how much interest Stroman has in returning to Toronto. That's the thing. I don't think he's going to return. He loved it there. Think he just goes back again? No. I mean, I he's loved so. it. Kind of. I mean, has he ever said he didn't like it somewhere? I love Marcus Stroman. I think, I do too. I, yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan of Marcus Stroman. I, I think every team he's on is going to love him. So in return, he's going to love the people giving him love. It's just a love fest. So we'll get into Stroman in a minute. I think the Jays make a lot of sense if it's not the Giants that pull the trigger on him. 
the way that I view Gosman simply is if he is unlocked and it's full steam ahead, training wheels are off. We know what we're getting. He's in a $150 million arm. Yeah. If you don't think that was truly Gosman and you think front half of 2021 was a fluke, he's, he's a, a $50 deal. million dollar arm. No, he's like a one-year deal guy. Because if you're paying him for what you think that he'll go back to, then he's really a show me deal again. But yeah, he, that's not what he's going to get. But but he might have earned it with that flukiness, right? It would be like one year 25 or one year 30. Mean. But I think if you split the difference and say there's a possibility that we get unlocked Kevin Gosman, but there's also a possibility that we have to go through the process of unlocking him again, split the difference, $100 million, 110. I think you're right in the ballpark there. So we're done with Gosman. Now number 12, back to the position players and super utility man, Chris Taylor. 2021 was his first all-star nod played in 148 games hit 20 bombs stole 13 bags hit 254 meh 344 obp a little bit better he's a career 109 ops plus guy so he is slightly above average but here's where his value comes in he spent legitimate time at short second, third, left, center, and right this year. And he would switch positions mid-game often. He turned 31 years old at the end of August. He could return to the Dodgers. He could go to the NL East with the Phillies, the West with the Giants, the AL West with the Mariners, also the Astros, and Arm Layton's going to be pissed that we didn't say that the Marlins were in contention here. I like what your ballpark is monetarily with Chris Taylor. I think Chris Taylor is going to sign a four-year deal worth $68 million, and he's going back to Los Angeles with the Dodgers. I have him nabbed at around $17 million a year. I use the DJ LeMayhew six-year $90 million contract. I use the Ben Zobrist four-year around $60, 50-ish million. It kind of seems exactly where he's going to end up, just a really good utility guy in his 30s, deserves the money, can play all over. Good bat, been there before in the playoffs. I just think the Dodgers are going to realize this. He's a main reason why we're here. When we lose a star here, we lose a star here. Chris Taylor is so important to fill into that role. And I think they say, you know what, Chris Taylor, come on back. The years of the super utility baseball player are over. Um, I'm blanking on where I read this, but. I, somebody was bringing it up, like the whole idea of the bench ACE um, plug and play guy, wherever is done, which sucks because those guys were amazing when they were good. Chris Taylor is a throwback in that sense, because you're right. Whenever Muncie goes down, flip somebody to first base, put Chris Taylor where that person was. If Bellinger is going to play first, you can throw Taylor in center, right? Like Chris Taylor is the most valuable defensive chess piece the Dodgers had. I, for Chris Taylor's sake, would like to see him be the poster boy for a team. So I wouldn't like to see him go back to LA. I think a place like Miami would adopt him and make him their own. And I think the Ben Zobris deal is a great reference point. Among the other finalists, I also really like Seattle for him. Makes a lot of sense. Seattle. So I have I have some takes on Seattle. I actually Seattle were hearing that they're going to be buyers and they should be buyers. They were a great team this year and all of their young talent is starting to sprout. I agree they should be buyers. That's a position of need. Second base, not necessarily outfield kind of. Yeah, you could play everywhere. I love that, but I have a bigger name going to Seattle. So I actually just have him staying with the Dodgers. I like the Marlins thing. I like the idea of someone making him their own. I just think the Dodgers certainly don't care about the about how much money. I just think they're going to look back and think to themselves, you know what, Chris Taylor is such a big reason why we're here. I know I keep saying it, but we need him. That's just my feel. And we're going on feel here because we're hearing so many different options. We, we were just talking on the phone before we did the pod earlier today, and we said the Dodgers' willingness to go over the luxury tax is like parking your car in the university president spot and just flipping everybody off as you walk into your building. Like, exactly. Our- it's like I have my own parking spot everywhere in the world because all it is is a fine. It's just a fine. So technically, if you have all the money in the world, you have a parking spot wherever you want forever. Right. What are you going to do? Tell me? Fuck you. I'll buy a new car. 
<laughs> that's their vibe. That's totally that's their vibe. the Dodgers vibe. Um, okay, let's move on to number 11. And this guy, uh, I don't even know where to start with him. I'm just going to let you kind of take over with Starling Marte, who's 33 years old and just had a year from heaven. 310 with a 383 OBP. He led Major League Baseball swiping 47 bags, but he just turned 33. If speed is your game, what's a 34-year-old Starling Marte going to be like? What's a 36-year-old Starling Marte going to be like? The Marlins are probably going to lowball him. The Phillies, Yankees, Giants, and Padres might also be um, candidates for Marte. I have Starling Marte signing a four-year, $100 million deal with the New York Yankees. He fits perfectly in center field for them. No Aaron Hicks, you know, no Brett Gardner, or we're not sure about Brett Gardner. Most likely, no. It you know, seems by like the way, the- Peter, if Brett Gardner's on your team, you don't need to play him all the time. Yeah, he's not <laughs> going to start in center field. Reg- or, well, I mean, he might. That's the thing. It's like he, re- <laughs> he might. God. But – my thing with Starling Marte, the Yankees are in a position where they need some speed. They need a dynamic outfielder. We've heard them in talks for Cattell Marte. I mean, we even saw them at the trade deadline. Go get Tim LaCastro. They need speed, and they're just losing it. They're not gaining it. So Starling Marte in center field, is he a right-handed bat? Yes, but he fits in very nicely with the Yankees. And at $25 million a year, he's worth it. He was extremely valuable last year. I like Starling Marte a lot. The only thing I have is the age thing because what his talent level is, it's speed, which doesn't age well. It's defense, which doesn't normally age well. But doesn't it seem like the Yankees would give him a four-year, $100 million contract? Yeah, I was going to say, if I was the Yankees, I think the age is is pretty spot on there. I'm looking for a 33-year-old, but I'm looking for a righty bat with a little bit more swing and miss, a lot less speed, uh, and maybe 10 more home runs perfect perfect <laughs> and worse defense perfect yeah why not no but um I, it's starling Marte. you could really kind of plug him anywhere i'm not completely sold on the yankees um i've heard you know going back to the marlins i've heard giants a lot um i just pegged him with the yankees because i think if there was going to be a team to give him the most money i thought it would it'd probably be the yankees um, I think they go after one of those big shortstops. I think they grab a center fielder, and then I think they grab a starter, and those are their big spends. Yeah. Starling Marte kind of fits that bill. Yeah. Let's get into the top 10 with 30-year-old Marcus Stroman. The Mets, Giants, Angels, Cardinals, Cubs, Mariners, and Nationals, we think, are in the Stroman sweepstakes. He led the National League starting 33 games this year. The guy had a 302 ERA. That was really good. In 179 innings, he did have 7.9 strikeouts per nine. So he's not necessarily the swing and miss guy all the time, but he has never really been the swing and miss guy. You know, I was looking at him year by year and I was like, those K rates are actually a lot lower than I was thinking they were. But he throws low in the zone. He's used that sinker his entire career. He gets a lot of ground balls. He's a really good athlete, gold glove caliber pitcher. And he's also a leader and a spark plug for your team if you sign him. I think Marcus Stroman signs a five-year, $100 million deal with the St. Louis Cardinals. St. Louis Cardinals need pitching. Marcus Stroman fits that bill. That's the analysis. Marcus Stroman could literally go anywhere. I've seen him connected to 10 teams. Seems like on Twitter, he's like, I'd play there. I'd play there too. Would they give me money? I'd play there. It's so hard to peg where he's going to go. My thoughts is the way all of these other free agents ended up, I know that the Cardinals need a starting pitcher. He's one of the better ones. They have the money. Marcus Stroman to the Cardinals. This one, I (laughs) frankly don't know. I'm going to say something right now. If Stroman is a Cardinal, I think, Who did I just say this about? I just said this about a team. Uh, Seattle. I just said I might watch more Mariners games than any other team. If Stroman's a Cardinal, I think I might be watching more Cardinals games than any other team. Because you've got Stroman, Flaherty, Wainwright, that outstanding bullpen with Gallegos, hopefully a healthy Jordan Hicks, Ryan Helsley. Like They've got guys in there. 
And by the way, those pitchers are throwing in front of five gold glovers. Five. This team is set up beautifully. I mean, think about this. I'm going to run through the Cardinals rapid fire right now, just going around the diamond. If Stroman signs, Yachty catching, Goldschmidt at first, Edmund at second, maybe get a shortstop. I think we'll that's talk. the hole there. We'll talk. Oh, yeah. Arenado at third, Tyler O'Neill in left, Bader in center, Dylan Carlson in right. And that rotation includes Jack Flaherty, Adam Wainwright, and Marcus Stroman. Don't you feel that they're a starter away from being a World Series contender? And I feel like Marcus Stroman is that guy. And it's not, he's not a Robbie Ray. He's not a Kevin Gosman. He's proved it. He's done it before. He's not 37 like Max Scherzer. He's not 33 like Clayton Kershaw. Cardinals. Cardinals. I, Cardinals. I'm, I'm drinking that Cardinal Kool-Aid right now, man. Let's go to number nine. And now we do talk about Robbie Ray. Ray is 30 years old. And this guy is a wild card. Yeah. He led the AL in innings, strikeouts, ERA, whip, starts. He had 11 and a half strikeouts per nine. I think he'll win the American League Cy Young Award. And he's a fresh 30. He just turned 30 earlier this month. The Blue Jays are a candidate to re-sign him. The Cardinals are a candidate the Giants, Angels, Yankees, and Cubs are also in the mix. I have Robbie Ray staying with the Toronto Blue Jays at five years, $120 million. I think they're going to open the bag for him. I think if anyone knows Robbie Ray, it's the Blue Jays. I'm seeing his market look like that. I think if the Blue Jays are out, you may see him get less money throughout the market. My thinking there is if the Blue Jays aren't in and if I'm another team looking in and I say, well, why aren't the Blue Jays actively trying to re-sign him? And I think if the Blue Jays are, they actually get him. And if they aren't, he doesn't see that kind of money. Yeah. I does don't that make know sense? what. Yeah, it does. Like, I don't know what kind of money this guy's going to see because he's going to be the reigning Cy Young Award winner. I have no idea where to place him because I don't know how evaluators look at him. I know how we evaluate him. But I don't know how actual evaluators, I don't know if he's, I mean, these are around the figures that we're seeing, but I also could see someone say, you know what? You did it once. Like, let's see you do it again. But he's had years where he's shown this level of potential, but never put it all together. That's why it's so hard. And at 30, it's so hard to nab this guy. I'm telling you, he's a wild card, man. I mean, he he had one year in Arizona. It was his lone all-star appearance before this year where he was like Cy Young caliber pitcher. Yeah. And then you've got years where he can't throw a strike. <laughs> like, I don't know what to make of Robbie Ray. The last time a Cy Young award winner, a reigning Cy Young award winner hit the open market was not long ago. It was Trevor Bauer coming into this year. And Bauer signed the highest average annual value deal for a pitcher in major league history. I mean, he was near $50 million annually. And we also got to get Robbie Ray. We also got to give Ray some credit too. He's facing the Rays lineup. He's facing the Yankees, the Red, the Sox. Red Sox. He's facing good hitting every the Orioles single day. And it's in the AL East, the DHs. I know, but still like that matters. And that's what Robbie Ray had to go up against this year. And yet he was still elite. So did yeah. the Blue Jays unlock something? I don't know. I don't know either. Nick Castellanos is 29 years old. Got his first all-star nod in 2021. Hit 310 with a 940 OPS. 34 bombs, 100 RBIs. He's one of the worst defensive outfielders in baseball. And he hits the open market. He's our eighth best free agent. I want to walk through the home and road splits. Aram did a great job doing this on JustBaseball.com. Go check out the article diving into Nick Castellanos. But in 2021, at home versus away, I'm going to give you batting average, slugging, and OPS. I'm going to go home first, away second. At home, Castellanos hit 359. He hit 260 on the road. He slugged over 700 at home. He was 454 on the road. OPS was north of 1100 at home. On the road, it was 772. This guy was the best player in baseball 
at Great American Ballpark. On the road, is he a $10 million a year guy? He's somewhere in between. I see Nick Cassiano signing a five-year, $120 million deal with the New York Mets. God. Doesn't it seem like the Mets are the, are the team to give this guy the deal? I think they're going to lose Conforto. They might lose Dom Smith. They're going to need an outfielder. They're going to want to make a splash if they don't sign Baez. Even if they do sign Baez, I think their focus is going to be on that offense. You know, they have the pitching. The pitching wasn't the problem this year. It was the, just that the offense was anemic. I like Cassianos going to New York, but in the Metropolitan. What are your thoughts there? So you got to pay Castellanos like a top three DH in baseball because he is really bad defensively. But here's he, the thing. I'm hearing that though. Like, is it is it to the point where you can't play him in right field or you can't play him in any of these positions? I feel like he can at least, you know, play the outfield. Especially I, for, I don't think he's just AL or bust, only a DH and that's it. I, I can't get behind that. Here's the thing, Pete. This is what we got to factor in here. We might be looking at a lockout come December 1st. With this new CBA, there might be 15 more jobs for a DH. There will likely be 15 more jobs for a DH. So the Mets are going to have the chance of having a DH. That opens Maybe. the market up. Maybe. I think probably. So if there is the DH in the National League, I think Castellanos is going to get paid like a top three DH in baseball, which I think is right up that alley. I think it could be more. I think it could be five years, 135 with somebody. I could see the Mets doing it. I could see the Padres doing it because they feel like they need to spend even more money. I could also see the White Sox doing it. I could see too. I like the White Sox there. The, my, the White Sox just have so many outfielders that they could go through. But if they add a Nick Castellanos in that lineup, that, I mean, their lineup is already fantastic. But, I mean, that puts them on a whole nother level. White Sox had a revolving door at DH. Mm -hmm. Slap him in there. Seventh best free agent in baseball for this year is the 37-year-old, aging like fine wine, Max Scherzer, 2021. He had a 2.46 ERA, which was the best clip in his entire career. He led the NL in whip, hits per nine, walks per nine. He had more command than ever before. And across 11 starts with the Dodgers, he had a sub two ERA, 89 strikeouts, eight walks in 68 and a third innings of work. I just want to give Scherzer some love right now. 2021 will be the eighth full season in a row. He finishes in the top five in Cy Young voting and the fifth season in a row being within the top three. This guy's a first ballot Hall of Famer. He is a first ballot Hall of Famer. And I have him signing a three-year deal worth $90 million with the Los Angeles Dodgers. And I have the Angels written down. <laughs> and I'm starting to just backtrack on that because even though I think the Angels would give him this type of deal, I think the Dodgers end up retaining him for a lot of money. I know Max Scherzer. We are hearing reports that he wants and he needs a contract going into his 40s. He's 37 right now. I think if he were to get $30 million into his age 40 season, I think he'd take that, especially with the Dodgers. Run it back. Let's see if we can win a chip this year. I still... I just, I know he wants to be in California. That's why I was thinking maybe Angels, but I just think it's going to be the Dodgers. I'm going to say something that should be thrown out the window by anybody thinking about signing Max Scherzer. In 2021, he had the slowest average fastball velocity since StatCast started tracking fastball velo in 2016. He had the least movement on his slider in the StatCast era as well. So the stuff is obviously starting to tick down, but... He located better than he ever has. The percent of pitches upstairs was at a high, and the percent of pitches down the middle was at a low. So Scherzer, while he might be losing a tick or two on both his fastball and his slider, he's gaining it in his dome. So I think you've got to give this guy. And again, with the Kershaw thing, he's going to sell tickets. He's going to get 
X amount of hundreds of thousands of eyeballs on your TV, on your telecasts every fifth day. With Scherzer, I see three years. I'm going to up it to 105. I like it. I think he's going to get paid. But when I came to you, because my bold take was four years for 120 to Los Angeles. Was it the years that you didn't like? Was it the money you didn't like? Was it the angels you didn't like? Or was it the whole goddamn thing? I think it was the angels that I didn't like. You just don't think the angels are actually the team to do it. I just feel like they might get desperate and say, you know what? Max Scherzer is still Max Scherzer. We got Otani. We got Trout. We got Rendon. We got Jared Walsh now. We got to we got to do something. We got to win now because these guys are not spring chickens. Yeah. Besides Jared Walsh, who's a beast. Yeah, he is a beast. I don't know. Yeah, they got to go get somebody. But like, I just don't think they're going to pony up and pay Scherzer. Let's move on to Trevor's story. He's 28 years old and he's going to get a bag. Does he deserve a bag? Yeah, he does. In 2021, he played in 142 games. So the overwhelming majority of the season hit 251. OBP good, not great, 329, had an OPS just over 800, 24 bombs, 34 doubles, 75 driven in, and a career low in K rate, struck out just 24% of the time. But he had his worst defensive season of his career by outs above average. And before we dive in to who's going to sign him, the career splits. At home, he hit 303. On the road, 241. He slugged over 600 at home, 442 on the road. At Coors Field in his career, Trevor Story has a 972 OPS. He's got a 752 OPS away from Denver. How are you going to pay him? Well, it's not how I'm going to pay him. This is the (laughs) team that I think is going to pay him because he was our most overrated player in baseball. I think... He is going to sign a five-year, $125 million deal with the St. Louis Cardinals. You pair him with Nolan Arenado, it just makes too much sense. Paul DeYoung is not the answer at shortstop, and I don't think Edmundo Sosa is either. Trevor Story at age 28 becomes the Cardinal shortstop for the next half decade. I Simple. I like how I just think that's the team that makes the most sense. Yeah, I I can see it. I hope the Cardinals don't do it. Honestly, instead of story, I would like to see Edmund make the move to short and Nolan Gorman slot in as the second baseman. Interesting. But do you think Edmund has the arm? Yeah. He can get the arm. He can get the arm. I mean, he's just really good at fielding. I'm sure he really figured out. He knows his body. He's smart and he's a gold glover already. So let's go to Chris Bryant who's going to turn 30 on January 4th. Chris Bryant played in 144 games with San Francisco and Chicago this year. 25 bombs, 32 doubles, 73 driven in. Hit 265. He had the lowest average launch angle of his career. And we talked about that. Line drives aplenty. Had a 123 WRC+. Played 55 games at third, 48 in left, 39 in right, and played 20 games in center. He's a career 278 hitter with an 880 OPS. Granted, that was front-loaded with the Rookie of the Year and the MVP. 24% strikeout rate, 12% walk rate. So he does strike out, but he walks a lot too. Chris Bryant is a defensive Swiss Army knife that has lost some power, won't ever be the hitter he was when he was 24 years old, but he's got the chance to be a damn good hitter. And I think he is going to sign, Chris Bryant will sign a six-year $150 $150 million deal with the San Francisco Giants. Here's my thinking on why he'll go back to the Giants. I mean, you spoke about it. Actually, his versatility. Doesn't it seem like the Giants value that over a lot of a lot of different teams? They're going to lose Buster Posey. He's retiring. Brandon Belt might leave. Will Brandon Crawford turn in the same type of year? They need that offense. Chris Bryan. Chris Bryant. Chris Bryant provides that at so many different positions where I think the Giants will need him. Their plug and play system works with Chris Bryant. Chris Bryant obviously really liked it there, it seemed like. I think that they'll give him the bag, knowing that they might not be able to retain a lot of their free agents, except making Chris Bryant their dude. I love that. And I I think that makes perfect sense. I like the length, six years that takes him through his age 35 season. I like the money. 
150 million dollars that's a little bit less than 30 it's like 25 a year Mm -hmm. um and i like the team just because kb seems happy and for somebody that really values the happiness of chris bryant i just want to see him happy i don't want to see him with four homes i want to see him with two i agree i think the giants make sense you go from the cubs where you want to chip go to the giants go win another just seems like that's going to be the career that chris bryant has he was a cub and he was a giant and he was a champion and he was just a good dude. And he's a good fourth, dude and a good hitter. Fourth best free agent in the game this year is Marcus Semyon. Marcus Semyon is durable as shit. <laughs> he has logged 700 plus plate appearances in each of the last three full seasons, including leading Major League Baseball in plate appearances twice over that three year span. He had career bests in home runs this year with 45, RBIs 102. And he stole 15 bases in 16 attempts. It was his first all-star nod. He won his first gold glove. This year was his first year as a predominant second baseman since he was 23 years old. This was his first time ever appearing at second base since he was 23 years old with the White Sox in 2014. He turned 31 in September. The White Sox are interested, as are the Red Sox, the Yankees, the Mariners, the Astros, the Rangers, and the Tigers. A lot of people want... Marcus Semyon. Peter, what do you think? I think Marcus Semyon signs a five-year, $125 million deal with those Seattle Mariners. Seattle, stand up. You're buying, and you're buying big. This guy makes so much sense in your lineup. He can play short, but he could also play second. If you think J.P. Crawford's the answer, no worries. He'll slide over to second, hit you 40 bombs, and be a perfect veteran in that clubhouse for the Julio Rodriguez's of the world, the Jared Kelnicks, the Taylor Trammells, the Ty Francis, the J.P. Crawfords, the young starting pitching, and make Marcus Semien your guy. You put him in the middle of the order, replacing Kyle Seeger, not position-wise, but clubhouse-wise, and he's a better player than Kyle Seeger ever could have hoped to be. You plug Marcus Semien in there, Mariners, you're looking at a playoff spot, potentially. That warmed my heart. Didn't it? I felt I would love good to saying that, Semyon. dude. Oh, Semyon in Seattle would be awesome. I love it. And and I think that money makes sense, too. I think 25 mil a year makes a lot of sense. A little bit north um, of that. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot of money. Let's move on to three. Freddie Freeman's still a stud. This year, he hit 300 with an OPS four points under 900. 31 bombs, 83 RBIs, led the National League in plate appearances, so he plays all the time. Over the last four years, Freddie Freeman has missed seven games. He's a gold glover, a two-time Silver Slugger Award winner, just turned 32, and I want to run through the Braves' all-time war leaders among position players. Hank Aaron, Eddie Matthews, Chipper Jones, Andrew Jones, Dale Murphy, Freddie Freeman. He's going to be a Brave. How much money are the Braves going to pay him? The Braves are going to give him six years, $180 million. Atlanta, if you, if you shortchange him, if you don't, if you give him a contract like you gave Ozzy Albies, and I know that was a good team deal. Good for you. Good job that you signed, but don't underpay Freddie. He deserves it. He won a chip for you. Now give him as much as he wants. Give him 200 million. Give him 300 million. It's Freddie freaking Freeman. I think it's going to be for 180, but if I see anything less than 150, I'm going to be pissed at you, Atlanta. And I don't want to be pissed at you. I was just so happy that you won a championship. Don't don't underpay Freddie just because you can. He just saved so much fucking money jipping Acuna and Albies when they were young. Pay him all that money and then be like, Freddie, can you give some of it to Acuna and Ozzy? Just like, can we make all of our dudes happy? I guess that's why they're world champions, because they underpay the players. I like the idea of front-loading the shit out of that deal. So you've got... You've got 40 million a year, 45 for the first two or three. Yeah, right? Like, I think if you front-load the hell out of that deal, then you've got him on this scale downwards. So as his yearly value goes down, when Acuna and Albies hit the open market, you can make a run at signing both. You can for sure retain Acuna. Um And I think Freddie's going to do that because he's a classy dude. And I think he loves the Braves. So he's going to work with the organization here to say, how can I put you in the best position to sign and retain the other superstars with Atlanta? I think that'll be great. 
So I just hope the Braves don't short sell him, please. And it, imagine if he's on another team. I think there's a 99.9% chance the Braves resign him. I agree. Our second best free agent this year might not be who you think it is. Corey Seager is number two with just baseball. 27-year-old only played in 95 games due to a hand fracture, but he put up an OPS north of 1,000 after he returned from injury through the end of the year. He has missed a considerable amount of time in three of the last four years, but when he is on the field, he's a 300 hitter slugging north of 500 with multiple top 10 MVP finishes at 27. Dodgers are going to be interested in retaining him. Yankees need a shortstop. Cardinals need a shortstop. I don't know if they have the money. Phillies need a shortstop. They don't have the money. The Astros need a shortstop. They're not going to pay. Seattle needs a shortstop. They might pay. And Detroit needs a shortstop. They're going to pay big money to one of these two guys. How much do you think Corey Seager makes? Corey Seager will sign an eight-year, $210 million deal with the New York Yankees. Brian Cashman, this is the player. The lefty bat you need. The shortstop you need. The World Series champion you need. The guy who doesn't strike out all the goddamn time. Corey Seager has to be the number one option for the Yankees, considering the Carlos Correa Houston stuff, considering Correa is a righty. Get your lefty, move Glaber to second, pay him whatever he wants. I say pay him 210 over eight and make Corey Seager the next Yankee shortstop for the foreseeable future. What do you think? I think I think you're totally, totally underestimating how much money Corey Seager is going to make. Possibly, possibly 210. I was thinking eight, you know, I think it might be years. 210 is a lot. Yeah, but eight, 280 is more. And I think he might be eight years, 280. You think he's going to be that much? Yeah. Because I had, you know, we'll see what I have with Correa. Maybe I'm undervaluing exactly how much money they really will get i understand mm. at 27 trout got 12 years 430 could they get 10 but are they 10 year they're not mike trout are they 10 year guys though like mm. i'm I, we're seeing i mean even jim bowden 10 years 320 10 years 300 i'm just like whoa that seems like a lot but maybe i'm undervaluing it you think he's going to get closer to 300 yeah you ready for the most screwed up? I I mean, this sum of money that I'm willing to hand Carlos Correa if I'm the Tigers is absurd. But let's let's kind of preview Correa because the 27 year old Carlos Correa is our top free agent available. In 2021, he led all position players in Major League Baseball in WAR. He was half a win better than the second best player in Major League Baseball in defensive WAR. He won his first Gold Glove. He hit 26 bombs, drove in 92, had an 850 OPS, and he had a better WRC plus than Rafi Devers, Pete Alonso, and Mookie Betts. Everybody should be interested in Carlos Correa. Do you want to say your predicted contract with the Tigers first? Do you want me to rip you mine? I'll say mine first because I want to hear your rip. I'm going to stay with my bold take that Carlos Correa signs with the Detroit Tigers for eight years. $250 $250 million. But I know you're about to say why he deserves $50 million more and why he deserves maybe two, one or two more years. Carlos Correa is going to sign a 10-year $320 million deal with the Detroit Tigers. And we'll tell you why, because everyone's also been asking why the Tigers? What are you here? Why Detroit out of all teams? And we've said it. A.J. Hinch, his former manager, you go around the diamond, Spencer Torkelson, Riley Green, Dylan Dingler, their three best prospects, a catcher, a corner infielder, and an outfielder. They got the pitching. Nico Goodrum is probably not the answer at shortstop, and they don't have that shortstop prospect. So who are they going to spend the big money on? And this is not a Tigers team that's like the Pirates or the Diamondbacks. Like, they will give money. They've Detroit's got given, coin. They've given big contracts before. We've talked about the Prince Fielder. Con- well, we've talked about contracts. Miguel Cabrera, for one, this could be their guy and makes the most sense in the world. 
while simultaneously not making a ton of sense, which makes me think it makes all the more sense that it's like the tigers, but it makes so much sense. It will happen. Let me tell you this. Carlos Correa outside the numbers. I test. We love the eye test. We're not an advanced stats pod. We are an advanced stats pod. We're everything. We do everything. We do everything. We're going to give baseball. you the entire bucket, but then we're going to tell you what we think. If that's how it should be. Carlos Correa is my favorite defender to watch in baseball because he has far and away the most exciting arm I've seen outside of Andrelton Simmons when he was in Atlanta. I mean, oh, no. the ball gets from point A to point B so quickly. Explodes explodes he gets to pretty much everything and oh by the way he's one of the most clutch performers in postseason history he really is isn't he that piece of shit just kidding he's not actually a piece of shit my my thing with the yankees and um the yankees are definitely going to offer him something the reason i say he's a piece of shit is because he's an astro does he deserve it no no i'm gonna get past the astros thing on my own time thank you I don't need to be told that I should stop and that I'm a little baby for still, I am on my own time. Okay. Still getting over it. Sounds like it's Chris. Really good. I mean, especially in the playoffs. He is so, so good. He's going to get a lot, a lot of money. He's Peter. I'm Jack. All the corresponding links you need are in the episode description. Justbaseball.com is going to have a write-up on all these free agents as the offseason rolls on, but we will talk to you tomorrow. Thank you, everybody.